In the last video, we saw that carbonyl compounds that have alpha protons can be converted into enolates by deprotonation with a base. With standard run-of-the-mill bases like hydroxide or alkoxides, most carbonyl compounds are only deprotonated to a small extent at equilibrium. So in your flask, there's a lot of carbonyl compound and just a small portion of enolate. However, the position of this equilibrium depends on the strength of the base. With a strong enough base, including a special base called lithium diisopropyl amide, or LDA, we can essentially completely deprotonate every molecule of a carbonyl compound, making a flask full of enolate, with almost no carbonyl compound remaining. One of the implications of enolate formation, whether we do it with a strong or weak base, is that enolizable carbonyl compounds, whose alpha carbons are stereocenters, tend to racemize over time. This occurs because when we deprotonate the alpha carbon, the resulting enolate is flat. And reprotonation can be done from either face of the homo there's a 50-50 chance that we put the H back exactly where we took it from, or that we put it back on the other face of the enolate. Under neutral conditions, this racemization is fairly slow, since enolization is also pretty slow. With acid or base present, though, this becomes quite rapid. An example of this racemization is with drugs. Drug molecules that have stereocenters, alpha to a carbonyl group, can be made and packaged as pure enantiomers, but as soon as they enter our bodies where lots of acids and bases are present, they rapidly racemize. This means that the FDA review process of drugs like this must show that both enantiomers are safe, regardless of how the drug is sold. I encourage you to read about the drug thalidomide, it was a case in the 1950s where one enantiomer was safe and effective, but the other enantiomer caused serious health issues. Once formed, enols and enolates are both nucleophiles. The homos of both conjugated systems look similar, a node through the central carbon, which used to be the carbonyl carbon, and lobes on the alpha carbon and oxygen. It turns out that the alpha carbon has the larger lobe in the HOMO, but the oxygen is where most of the negative charge is localized. This makes the oxygen a hard nucleophilic site, and the alpha carbon a soft nucleophilic site. With the exception of protonation to form enols, we'll focus on reactions that occur at the enolate carbon. When enols or enolates react with electrophiles, they reform carbonyl groups and make a new bond at the alpha carbon. This is the telltale pattern of reactivity of enols and enolates. New bonds alpha to the carbonyl group.